What is up? Welcome to the All Things Music Podcast. I am your host, Ryan, here with Blaine Smith. I don't know, are you co-founder, founder of Banger TV? What's your title there? What's your official title? Uh, I don't I don't I mean we don't we don't really have official titles. I'm not the I'm definitely not the founder or co-founder. Like I I do but I do a lot of the YouTube channel. <laughs> You're kind of the face. Then, we'll say the face of Banger TV. One yeah, of many, but, but one of the primary faces of Banger TV. It's evolving yeah. as we continue the podcast. But uh good to have you on. It's nice to actually talk to you as as far as just watching you on my screen every week. Uh I will say this is going to be a really fun, in-depth, educational, uh, what have you, conversation because we're kind of pitting two different metal worlds together today, and uh, that being the extreme metal world and the modern metal world. And for those listening that usually listen to my podcast, I am very involved in the modern metal world. And to describe the difference, at least in my head, modern metal is your hardcore, deathcore, uh, metalcore, core 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 gent to gent fall those sorts of things and extreme metal is kind of everything else that to be honest my stuff wouldn't exist if it wasn't for extreme metal in the first place so uh because of that i've had such an interest even not being from that world always wanting to immerse myself in that world to one take influence from it two it's always good to know where you come from uh and three I'm just genuinely curious as to like how the state of the extreme metal world is today. So when I watch your metal monthlies and all your other things, your reviews, I personally do so to educate myself and to like, there's a whole other world of metal that I just, a lot of people that are in my world don't even know exists. And I think banger TV is such a cool resource for that. So, um, kind of tell me one, I, I'm very curious off the bat. I kind of want to know how are your feelings on my end of the world? What do you think of modern metal as a whole compared to obviously extreme metal, which you're super into? Uh, yeah. I mean, it's just stuff that I never wound up listening to. And so it's kind of like, I'm like, I'm, I'm always happy that it's there because it does feel like a, it, it, it feels like it, in keeping metal like a healthy, happy ecosystem, like your side of the thing is doing more of the heavy lifting. You know what I mean? Like sure. you're at the you're at this point, like the 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 kids that are like supporting the, the parents that are like have have reached retirement age and like the health isn't going so well. So you you do what you do so that we can still like live in a house and have a nice time that's totally fair and actually that brings up a point i wanted to bring up is the demographic of listeners between the two worlds it's not that there aren't young people listening to the extreme metal side of things i think in fact there's seems to have been at least from the outside looking in sort of a renaissance of a younger age group getting into black metal and death metal and, and other things of that nature whereas obviously with modern metal it's extremely young and there's a lot of people that are older not you or anything like that but people that are you know like oh that's not real metal that's blah 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 so is there you know in your mind is there a difference in demographic between listeners of each world and do you see what i see in regards to is there's a lot of like really awesome young upcoming death metal bands some thrash crossover some some black metal, some really cool young people. It's not just like older generations holding the tor torch and then it's going to burn out and die. And there goes extreme metal. I feel like there's still some something there to be excited about for the young people. Oh, totally. Yeah. And I mean, it, it, it the past, like, you know, metal's never going to go anywhere just because, you know, no, no art, especially as broad as something like metal is ever going to go anywhere. But it, it does feel like the past, yeah, like 10 years, there's been a really good um, due to some like, you know, there's been a kind of popularization of the black metal aesthetic, which is, you know, we can uh, <laughs> we have our feelings on that. But what it does result in is like, you know, some people are going to find out about something because of the aesthetic and then actually stick around so black metal has been really healthy in that respect and then there's 
there's been a really big push, I guess, I guess just because of, you know, I, like sort of like a, a the the counter swing of the pendulum from like, you know, modern metal to like being like super old school death metal revival, like has has really kind of, yeah, had a had a great 10 years as well to the point where we've got a lot of bands that are really, yeah, making making a throwback death metal and it's cool to have like hey we're we're throwing we're throwing back to the start of the genre you know that's it's a it's a fun it's a fun place to be in when you're kind of doing like the like oh yeah what never mind what our dads liked was the best metal let's do that again right no that's totally interesting i feel like that's uh i call it the 20 year rule too so like there's 20 years ago for example Limp Biscuit was the most made fun of band in the world. There is not a second. It was like, if you liked Limp Biscuit, you were just a loser. And now, Limp Biscuit, at least in my world, is cool again. People are like, yeah, Limp Biscuit. And it's crazy how that happens where 20, 30 years ago, death metal wouldn't call it the coolest genre in the world. You know, it was a lot of guitar nerds and people who played really well and people who, who liked that sort of thing. Um, but now it seems like the kids are like, okay, that shit's cool again. Let's, let's, let's put our own spin on it. What you mentioned, something interesting that I kind of want to dive into in the, in the modern metal world. And it's, I'm being very general here, but you know, metal core bands, not a little less respect hardcore deathcore you want to your priority is to make it big is to get to as many ears as possible obviously in lieu of selling out and becoming a band you don't want to be but you're you're still trying to get the spotify numbers up you're still trying to do all these things um and that's that's not that's like not frowned upon that's that's encouraged but it seems that in extreme metal there's a little bit of a different philosophy there I don't know if it's anymore where it's like, oh man, you guys are huge now. We you're not welcome in the family anymore, or like with black metal now that the the aesthetic is being appropriated commercially, that's a big no no. And like in in my world, that'd be seen as like, yes, that's awesome, that's positive for us because we're getting exposure. But I don't know in the extreme metal world is that like we got to keep things in house and keep like the real people doing the real stuff well we do have like we do have a and and this is not necessarily the camp that i particularly fall into there is kind of like really two types of people in the kind of extreme metal world where it is there's just people that are just hey i mean i don't if i like a band i would i would like them to make a living doing what they're doing and be able to put out as many good high quality albums for as long as possible and that usually happens when you know a band can sustain itself um and then there's like the no we have to gatekeep the hell out of this otherwise it'll be ruined by these and those people tend to be pretty unbearable because there's not like (laughs) you know there's not a magic personality switch where you're like that unbearable to like outsiders but like the instant they're gone you're like hey let's let's oh man let's have fun and (laughs) like be fun people to be around so i think the thing is just that there is like there are just bands that not even because they're like, oh, we don't want to sell out, man. Just there's bands that like do a thing. And, you know, like I, I'm Tomb Mold is kind of like one of the the big kind of bands in 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 extreme metal right now. And they just like occasionally release an album. Don't tour that much. Uh, one of the guys recently just was like, nah, I'm good. And then they had to get a new bass player. Like it's, it, and you're like, well, you could be making so much more money. You could be being a much bigger band. And they're like, no, nah, but that's not really what we want to do. And you're like, okay, sure. Right. And it's not, they don't like come off pretentious or like, they're just like, no, thank you. <laughs> and, and that's it. And you're like, oh, uh, okay, cool, dude, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, that's a, that's a wild perspective. I mean, I'm in a band and and I just can't imagine being like, yeah, money, meh. I still want to do my nine to five and 
Yeah. Yeah. You know, like they were just they were just on the cover of Decibel and like it's it's not like, okay, we're on the cover of Decibel. Let's strike while the iron's hot. It's like, cool. Our new album's being very well received uh, and we're on the cover of Decibel. See you in a bit, everybody. Do you think (laughs) is there is there maybe a lack of like was like a 4 p.m. matinee fundraiser for Palestine? And you're like, great job, guys. Like (laughs) good stuff. But strange that this is like, hey, do you want to go see Tube Mold at 4 p.m.? I can't remember if it just happened or it's like next week. It, it, I can't go because I'm working. Uh, but yeah, just like that, you know, weird. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it seems like uh, there might be a lack of desire to market. I don't know. Or just like that old adage of our music's good enough that we don't have to do anything else. I'm not saying these bands are lazy by any means. It's just more of this, uh, apathetic approach to the next level. But at the same time, there are bands in extreme metal, like Sui Sandabog who do such a good job with marketing and their videos and, and some of the, the cool creative stuff. So, uh, they're also a younger band. So I don't know. I don't know much about what he's too mold was the band. Are they a younger band or they kind of, no, no, no. Okay. no maybe that's like a, where it's a at no, a very normal aged man like yeah. That. <laughs> um yeah no it's yeah it, and it's funny because like a band like sangasugabog feels yeah, a rock, little whatever. bit uh well, it's fine like, it, yeah. I, I don't think there's a right way to say it right? <laughs> <laughs> um there's a uh uh is like feels like they kind of exist a little bit in my world and yours at the same and it, sure oh, definitely you know? see that yeah yeah so uh, there there's a lot of crossover there there's another there's a couple other bands that are kind of in both of our worlds what i really like about my world in particular is you can be a metalcore or a deathcore band or even hardcore to a certain extent and borrow elements of everything in your world there's blackened deathcore music there's you know there's there's that sort of deathcore that is more along the lines of death metal like suicide silence used to be or like there's a band called psycho frame who does that now where it's it's really death metal just with a little breakdowns put here and there it's not like that polished sort of deathcore you get these days with with a lot of other bands so i i think that's what i like the most and why i pay so much attention to the extreme metal world is because you'll end up pigeonholing yourself creative creatively if you just do the bare minimum in regards to okay i'm gonna put a breakdown and i'm gonna put a groove and i'm gonna do this whereas i'm like oh dude this this black metal band i heard on metal monthly did this sick riff I'm going to add that to our interlude right before drop or whatever it is. You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's really cool to see that. And what I do see in your world too, is it's, it, it happens a lot within the genres of extreme metal. Sometimes you'll have a band. And you're like, I don't even know what the fuck to call this band because it's a crossover between this, this, and this. Are you seeing that more often? Because back in the day you didn't touch other people's styles. It was, your style and you you ran with it but it seems like today more people are uh uh more inclined to to borrow that and and take their own spin on things yeah so like again because of that like the both black metal and kind of death metal it had have been in that kind of Oh, let's like a like a back to basics kind of like back to the 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 you know the founding style and principle of the genre and um, and the reason it happened was because that just everyone, you know, or en- enough people started to feel like, ah, oh, this shit's all getting, this shit, it's all getting too commercial and it's just not really, it's not really what we like about those older bands or like those older bands, older material. And so that's been happening for a little while now. So there's only really two options for how you keep doing that, which is either you become the stuff that you started this because you didn't like or you go like all right well we got to go left or right we can't go forward because we know what goes what's forward so let's start let's just let's just make a let's make a turn here and we'll get something from here and i mean i've always been big on nothing drives me crazy when it's like you're talking about something outside of metal and then someone's like you you, you know that this the, the the banger tv it says banger tv all metal and every once in a while i'll like 
talk about a record that isn't metal. And, you know, um, uh, a majority of our viewership is very interested and excited. But every once in a while, someone will be like, so much for banger TV, all metal. And you're like, dude, you only listen to metal. That sounds awful it sounds an awful terrible. way to go about your life like do you not listen to other styles of music that's uh, unhinged <laughs> yeah because honestly if i listen to metal all the time i'd probably be my mental health wouldn't be as good that's for sure <laughs> i mean i it's all about vibes too hell it's if when it's nice out i'm listening to emo rap some pop some j-pop some uh blues whatever it's like if if i just listen to metal that'd be a very one-dimensional like boring uh way to go and it's it's just funny because i don't know who they think like that's for because you know right. it doing the work that i do i i like have to frequently be interacting with people from bands whether it's an interview or this or that and like once like cameras are off and you're just having a conversation with the person that like they're they want to talk about a record they want to talk about music but it's always like it's always like hey let's talk about yes records or something you know what i mean like it's never <laughs> like hey let's talk about let's keep talking about metal because i'm a i do metal for a job and i like metal and now that i'm in my spare time it, let's keep talking about metal like those those people don't really exist. And so it's like, I think you're trying, I think you're doing this to try and impress like your favorite m metal band, but that's not how they are. <laughs> oh, totally. I, I, it used to blow my mind when I would talk to bands and I'd be like, so, you know, what are some of the other bands that you draw inspiration from? And they're like, oh, I don't even listen to metal. And I used to be like, what? Wait. So how do you know what, what to do? Like, how do you know how to, how to make, the music you make but now it like makes total sense it's like if that's all they're doing for their job why would they listen we all understand that if you work in the music industry full-time you enjoy your job it's not like you hate coming to work but it's at the end of the day it's still work right yeah. so you have to have that escape um and it just used to be wild to me i used to almost be like off put like oh they think they're too good to listen to metal and now i'm like oh no, no, no. It makes total sense now. So it's just yeah. such an interesting dichotomy there. Yeah, it's like I don't I don't listen to five hours of metal in my basement on Sunday because I don't like metal. <laughs> and right. I, like if I didn't like metal, there's much less weird jobs I could be doing. But at the same time, the the this when the stream turns off, I'm not gonna usually like, well, more metal. I, I need a little Need a little, need a little palate cleanse. Need a little break. Need, a break. need something to just kind of, just give a bit of time in between. Because yeah, I, it it is one of the kind of complications of put making like something you love your job, where you're like, well, there will be times I don't love this because it's my job. Because it's just when someone tells you to do something. Right. Like, right. Yeah. So where do we see? You know, and I, I have the same question to myself in my world, but where do we see extreme metal going from here? It is there a, a plateau? Because it seems like, honestly, a lot of genres within are on the up and up. And uh, whereas I, I kind of in, in my metalcore, deathcore, hardcore world, it, it's starting to plateau a little bit. I don't see that in the extreme metal world yet. Do you? Do you feel like there's a bubble? Do you feel like there's more people starting cool bands? Because obviously with Metal Monthly, you're never running out of music to talk about, which is awesome. Because that means most of those underground bands are, I would assume, younger. Not all of them, but you're starting a band. So you're generally, you know, not in your 50s, 60s doing that. Um, do you do you see this, a really bright future for, for that area or... Do you think that it's going to plateau sort of like mine will, perhaps? Well, I mean, it depends on what you mean by like plateau. I mean, obviously, I think there's uh, like a kind of like, yeah, like a uh, maximum capacity. But I think like I if like this is if this is like the plateau, it's kind of like it, metal is <laughs> Metal isn't outside of some people getting to have a lot of money. Metal isn't like good when it's like the main thing. You know what I mean? Like there's I think a lot of 
like when metal people go, oh, will metal ever be like that? Oh, it, on the radio again or the man? And it's like it, it, this is music that never should have been there. Like someone <laughs> made an error and it got through there, but someone like press the wrong it, button. Yeah, this stuff isn't better in like sunlight. You know what I mean? Like it's like. <laughs> This is a night. This is like a great kind of music to be an underground music. It's you know, it's the same with like punk, right? Where you're like, I don't, I don't think people we want more like current Blink One Eighty Twos. You know, I don't think sure. like obviously everybody was really excited about early Blink One Eighty Two, and that's how you get Blink One Eighty Two what it is now. But it's like I don't think everybody's like, boy, I wish there was another punk band that like one of the guys would marry a kardashian and tickets would be three thousand dollars like it's it, that's not that's not what you're really like oh boy that was that's the best part of the music you know so if if things stayed exactly the way they are right now that would be fantastic because you're getting a bunch of good bands it seems like there's kind of enough money and and interest and 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 passion to go around to kind of sustain people and have it be like a viable thing to do but you don't have like at any point in metal being mainstream it was like so quickly before it was just like nah it's ruined almost immediately you know what i mean like it's it's you've got your you've got your like thrash uh immediately going like hey we've got a bunch of thrash bands and it's like well now it's hair metal and you're like okay some of these early hair metals and then you're like now it's fucking poison like do do you yep. want like in the 80s it was you got poison out of this in the the, the 90s we got well i mean lip, people are happy about limp biscuit again but you know we got like whatever the 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 worst band of that you think you know we got drowning pool yeah <laughs> I think like fair enough around a drowning pool you know what i mean like so it's like every time we let this get there you know someone goes like someone puts on their their glasses and starts counting some beans and some fucking guy who focus has focus tested music into like a predictable equation like makes a thing that you're just like oh look <laughs> yeah. so i would imagine then that you're not the biggest sleep token fan uh no <laughs> okay. do you foresee and i'm not talking sonically but do you foresee a band in, in the extreme metal area ever having a sleep token moment do you think that's even possible yeah it's like hard to think right because it, it, it almost every time that one of these bit like i mean ghosts it like i mean not that i don't know if you'd call heavy metal, good comparison. metal but like still like you know ghost had that but again a lot of the times in order to get there you have to kind of like attach on or get rid of the stuff that kind of i would say makes like the stuff we like right and sure. you know there's a there's a couple that do seem to be kind of getting quite li like sleep token and like i guess lorna shore tends to be like the kind of band that everybody the name kind of everybody it's uh for us right it's now. it's lorna shore it's sleep token it's bad omens it's spirit box that seems to be yeah. kind of the the area and it's been nicknamed baddie core because all the girls on tiktok do their <laughs> memeing singing you know thirst trap thing to it and yeah. that's that's where it is now it's baddie core but um anything can yeah. be core anymore it's kind of yeah <laughs> ridiculous. i do think the nice thing like one of the one of the kind of positives for the future is that like you as as like i mean the general music industry becomes like the the music industry with quotations around it the the kind of capital m capital i music industry becomes increasingly less relevant because you're not getting your music directly from a, a radio station or a television channel or anything and it doesn't matter how many cds are pressed it's like if you have a way to find the music and it comes to you like you can there doesn't need to really be like competing genres as much anymore so you no, can you self aggregate have, as a consumer now yeah so you yeah. can totally have like you know th th that be like a seemingly like mainstream and popular style of music while also being like you know not necessarily like if you did a man on the street interview most people would be like who I have no idea who they are who? right who you know
yeah, the monoculture, the days of TRL, the days of everybody seeing the exact same thing are kind of gone. Uh, wanted to, I was very curious about this. It seems like, and correct me if I'm wrong, seems like uh, Bandcamp is the most popular way to get music in extreme metal, whereas Spotify is more popular in my area. I don't know why that is. Um, it doesn't seem like for, for, for us, for, for the, these types of bands, Spotify monthly listeners is everything. Cause that's kind of what the industry wants. That's what the industry looks for, for opportunities. It's what booking agents look for. It's what media looks for. It's what podcasts, it's what sync licensing, all these things that are involved in getting your music out there. They look at that number as the kind of end all be all because it determines relevancy. Um, but it seems that there's more of an underground grassroots promotional style in extreme metal, whether it's vinyl or CDs or limited pressings or what have you. Do you see a difference there or is there a little bit of crossover? Oh no, it's like, it's a very, it's a very distinct. I'm always, I'm always completely shocked whenever, whenever like, something you know uh, i'm listening there's something i'm a i'm enjoying that's outside of uh metal and i go to find the Bandcamp page and they just don't have the, like a n- any representation on Bandcamp, <laughs> and i'm just like but well, why <laughs> would you not just <laughs> it takes like two seconds and then because m- m- extreme metal fans now there's still a big spotify culture and blah 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 and all that but uh extreme metal fans love like giving bands money for things and like love physically exchanging money with a band it's <laughs> it's a it's a integral part of the culture that and as someone who's like uh you know i don't have to like i get every record is in my inbox 100% of the time um so i don't buy a lot of records and but that does not I, my closet is fucked <laughs> my closet is insane <laughs> the amount of metal shirts every once in a while on my stream i just like every couple months i just have to go like hey so uh i'm just i don't really wear these five shirts anymore so uh raffle for my old shirts in the that's funny in the chat just you know just pr- just press exclamation point raffle and you're you get a free ticket of the raffle and whoever wins you get five medium band shirts because like i i mike i have an impossible amount like a, an unwearable amount of shirts and so i because i can't stop either you just like right. I, oh that's fucking that looks so sick yes Ugh. oh i bought a shirt like bought a shirt and a flag last week <laughs> yeah <laughs> like uh, and like well, I, it, it's Almost, almost like, almost like, it's very hard for me to make it through like a Sunday stream of looking at every, where I, so on Sundays, I look at every single band coming out one month in the future live on Twitch. It's very hard for me to make it through that Sunday stream without buying a a, a, a t-shirt. <laughs> but that's awesome because it, you're, one, obviously supporting, but two, the money that comes from that is way more tangible and usable than Spotify where they're paying 0.001 cents per stream or whatever the ridiculous number is. You have to, I don't know how it equates to consumership on Bandcamp. Like what does 1 million Spotify streams equal on Bandcamp? Does that mean that like a hundred people bought your CD? Like that's a curious thing because when I'm trying to figure out equivalencies, I'm like, okay, so who's who's the who are the bands that are gaining all the traction in extreme metal? Is there a way virtually as a consumer to like figure that out? Or is that just something that you have to like really dig deeper than just Spotify numbers? I mean, you know, Spotify numbers are still gonna like um because like most it's it's very weird because most I think I'd say most metal fans have a streaming service as well because it's just, you know, but despite having the streaming service, they still buy records. It's, it's a weird, it's like you go, like if I had records that I bought, I wouldn't need to use the streaming service anymore. 
Yes, but there's just, I mean, metal fans tend, to, like extreme metal fans tend to also like, like a, like actively like a staggering number of bands. Like not like, oh, I know a song by them or something. I like this album by this, like could just go all day with the, in the just ridiculous amount of bands. And so Very like. loyal. Yeah, I think it, usually if you go to Bandcamp, I always find it interesting. If you go to Bandcamp and look at just like the if like what's selling this week, like the the, the these right. are the top selling things. There's always a metal album in there, which you wouldn't necessarily think when there's like it's beside like a, a pop album and a hip hop album. And there's, you know, surrounded by dream pop. And then there's this little and then you go to the next page and there's maybe two metal albums in there. And. Yeah, it, it, it's it's weird to have a streaming service, and uh, but I mean, I have a streaming service. I don't like Spotify because I I, I hate that guy, the CEO of Spotify. I hate. Mm. I don't I don't have like a necessarily a, a much a much better alternative, in that I just have YouTube Music. But it you know it pays more per stream, and the CEO of I don't I haven't heard the CEO say like, well, if bands think they can release one album every three years, that might not be the future. The it's like right. fuck you. <laughs> so um because yeah, there's just like every once in a while I'll be like, Oh, I don't really I don't I don't I don't own the first three blind guardian records, but today I'm in the mood for the first three blind guardian records, you know. <laughs> Is there a a uh, is it albums only in extreme metal? Because with metalcore, deathcore, the cores, there's this big push for singles. Because with Spotify and with promotion and with influencers and reactors and all of those things, you're getting more bang for your buck with with just like okay, I'm gonna release single, 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 then album. Or some bands will go single, 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 single album. Some bands will be do it so much that by the time the album comes out, you've already heard the album minus two tracks, and one of them is an interlude. So it's it's kind of counterproductive in that sense. But there's this big push in in the core world to make singles more of a priority. Not that albums aren't important, but especially on the underground level where studio time is so much money and and there's all these things involved. Uh, singles EPs are sort of prioritized over albums in the extreme metal universe is that not a thing at all? Cause I feel like that it's so album influenced. I don't even know if bands do the single, single, single album release schedule anymore. Like, I mean, you still get like, you still get like one, two or three singles before an album comes out, but it's very specifically like those singles are being released so that you have something to listen to to sell the album. It's there's like, you know, there's there's it's not just exclusively like you got to put out a full length, you know, EPs are popular. Splits are really popular in the metal world. Like there's bands that put out like dozens of splits. And like, you know, they've got three albums and like 12 splits, but that's kind of a fun thing where you're like, you know, it's feels more, you know, it's a little community right. thing. It's nice. Yeah. You get to find out about new bands that way. Again, it feels very, feels very extreme metal. Um, But yeah, no, like I can't think of a band that just like release, like would ever release a single that wasn't for, that wasn't trying to like get you to get hmm like a larger package of music singles are and, and the the seeming like big trend <laughs> the, the seeming big trend um uh with like music videos and extreme metal as well is like uh a a a performance video like with e either either actually done on or with a filter to make it look like it was done on like a poor quality VHS handy cam from 93. That's I've like the, that. that's the hot video right now. <laughs> a lot of hardcore bands are doing that too. Knocked Loose is actually yeah. using a uh, sort of like an old grainy, like legitimately one of those really old cameras. And it, it gives it, I, I, if done right, it works because it gives it that kind of ugliness that matches the sound. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, sometimes it's cool to see like 
hey, I want to see what you actually look like, not a grainy 280p version of yourself. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I I can't. It's it's very rare that I see a music video for a band I like that isn't them performing. Like every once in a while, they'll have like a concept thing and there's been a handful, but usually it's it's just performance videos. There's no storyboarding. There's no, there's, yeah, there's no real storyboard or anything. It's, it's just, we're, we're putting out a video of us performing so that you will buy the album and then come to the concert. Are there a lot of extreme metal reactors on YouTube? Obviously you do it on Twitch, but I mean, like, you know, there's, as you know, well known now, Nick Nocturnal is kind of the biggest guy yeah, yeah. In, in the modern metal reacting world of as far as many others as well is is there a big community there because a lot of bands in modern metal will make their videos consciously or subconsciously extremely entertaining visually because they know that these reactors are going to be spreading them to the masses more than them just uploading it to their youtube channel themselves so they make it a, a conscious effort to be like okay we got to make this visually appealing we got to make it funny we got to make it entertaining because of that end result um if there's not a big community of reactors in extreme metal i would assume that might be why the videos are more i don't want to say generic that's never a good word but more just performance based and, and not as uh creative so to speak yeah no i mean it's uh, there isn't real like i i mean the there's there's certainly a bunch of youtubers covering extreme metal they again they tend to be smaller and uh i don't i don't really know of anyone that does like exactly what i do because i mean that's why i realistically the reason i started doing it is like i i had uh, uh i have obsessive compulsive and i'm just psychotic and i would just uh oh and this is something that i'd like to talk about metal archives um the website um mm -hmm. uh, i would look at every single metal release coming out every month and just like open That's them all <laughs> look at it eh, 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 eh. and this was before i worked for banger this was just like as this is how i found new music i just would go through and be like oh that's cool that sucks that's cool okay cool i got some new albums to listen to and then i was started working at banger and then i was like okay i'm doing this can you just let like you won't like you can't give me time to talk about all the bands i want to talk about and especially like making a video review of this band that like it's their first album no one's heard of them is like not necessarily the the best business model but if we fucking jam five of them into one thing and then i'm bringing five F bands every month then it becomes like a uh, you know my whole goal was to be like i wish someone like me did this for me so i could be lazier so can i do that and and then it kind of and then the Twitch thing kind of just naturally happened where I was like still doing it alone in a basement, um, but then making a show at the end. And then I was just like, well, what if I turn on the camera while I'm doing it? And then. Yeah, so oh, wow. I don't I, I, I think generally when 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 uh, when extreme metal people do this, it's it's more out of mental illness than like a thought that they're <laughs> gonna have like a successful YouTube channel. <laughs> Respect to the self-awareness for sure. Um, <laughs> um, I did want to ask when with the metal monthlies, something that's st struck me immediately being somebody that works in the industry, the metal monthlies are always generally underground bands that aren't super well known yet. They're all signed to record labels. It's very rarely that I, that you'll feature an independent band that's not signed. Whereas in modern metal, there's so many, independent bands is there kind of this like unspoken rule or some sort of quota or what have you where you have to have a record label to put out a record no it's just that they're again like because of the nature of 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 every part of extreme metal there are so many record labels and there are so many like record labels that like clearly someone's just taking a bath just uh, like 
ev- like this is just they there's no way they're recouping their costs i no. don't know how they're doing this they just like it, the, the you know uh, there's 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 a there's a, I don't know one in twenty probably bands I put in there are just a straight up independent band, but there's yeah there's like a there's just such a stable of quality labels that are like yeah really small that you people would never have heard of that just put out great records and yeah it's it's very it's very very easy to get on a label so a lot of them are very bad as well there's a lot of very bad labels that put out a lot of very bad stuff um but it's very easy to get on a label in um in uh, extreme metal because i think probably like the idea of what a label is is maybe a little different than uh than what it is in uh like for like a deathcore band where it's like they're not necess- you know there's labels that'll just be like oh Oh, we'll we'll put out your record. We'll help you like put it out, but like we're not like paying you for studio. You know, we're not covering all the costs. Right, exactly. We're not this and that. It's not like there's a there's you know a lot more kind of like a bit more of like a kind of punk vibe to the labels where it's like yeah we'll put out your record and then you know you're you sound like our other bands so like kind of just being in this stable is the thing and you know we'll we'll cover this and we'll you know maybe we'll maybe we'll handle the like distro of your stuff and then that's what we'll, we'll handle the distro and that stuff. But like, you've got to be fronting the money to make this. And then if you recoup your cost, that's your thing. Sure. Sure. That's interesting. I, I mean, I'm, I'm getting a vibe that extreme metal is a very communal thing and very authentically communal, not forced. And that, that I really like that. And I wish it, the modern metal world was a little bit more that way. What I do want to know is, in my world, um, there's a lot of social media outrage slash canceling these days based on behaviors that may or may not be bad. Some of them certainly are. Some of these things can be a little bit overblown. Um, but there's it. And it's it's a microcosm of the world as we know it, obviously. But is there that sort of tread water uh, behavior from bands in the extreme metal world? Because I do know that especially in black metal and some other areas, there can be hints or even more so the hints of racism and xenophobia and white supremacy and things that obviously any sane person wants to avoid. Um, But is there more, I guess, is there more of a tolerance for not that obviously, but for, for just behaviors that, can be cancelable online, but in reality or you know, okay. There I mean, there's it's it's weird because again, this is like a there's there's sort of kind of like a a, a bunch of different camps where it's like I would fall more on definitely what people would say is like PC. Like I I mean if you go to my stream, I'm saying all kinds of fucking wackadoo jokes and I'm saying <laughs> I'm saying some pretty offside stuff. But like it's because everybody, you know, it, I I feel like it's necessary to establish. I've established that like I don't mean any of this. If I'm saying something, it's with the I'm a stand up comedian, blah, blah, blah. Right. Um, uh, but there's. So there is a lot of bands doing a lot of sketchy stuff of, of like from the full spectrum. Um, and there uh, unfortunately does seem to be like a bit more of a tolerance than like there's there's like, uh, you know, there's there's a lot of stuff. It's, I mean, racism is, is 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 a very big problem in extreme metal. I mean, there's a big pushback where there's like a bunch of people trying to make like, you know, no notedly anti-racist black metal and stuff. And like, it's the point where a lot of times you'll go to a band camp page and someone will explicitly put like anti-fascist racist fuck off like is like a thing you have to do because there is there is a fair amount of racism and depending on the band, some bands just get to kind of like exist and operate having some pretty dodgy connections. And, you know, there's, there's been, there's been a, there's been a couple of bands, um, where (laughs) I can think of where 
um, members have gotten caught with uh, child pornography. Oh, and boy. then everybody's been like, all right, well, we can't listen to them anymore. <laughs> no tolerance for that. And you're like, but they were active Nazis before that. <laughs> right. Like that's the, that's what broke the camel's back. Really? <laughs> we do. We do. <laughs> before, And it's like, I don't know. Maybe, maybe there's like, maybe there's these things also kind of can, can go hand in hand a little bit. Like, Oh, if you don't value a, a certain group of people, maybe you're not suddenly going to be like, well, no, it's wrong to abuse people for my benefit and pleasure. It's like, it seems to, kind of go hand in hand with what they believed the whole time so there's it's it's weird where there is like kind of you know there will be some 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 push and pull but it does seem like uh if you're a bad guy extreme metal might be the place for you yeah I, i'm thinking now and i'm like i don't think i've ever heard of an extreme metal band other than you know, a, a, a Nazi band. Let's exclude that for a minute. But I don't think I've heard of an extreme metal band just being outright canceled. Yeah, it's really it really doesn't happen because there is like there is a there is a portion of the fan base that's, you know, has some leanings towards white supremacy and stuff. And they're, they're kind. But uh, they share a lot of the same qualities outside of that awful part of them that other metalheads have, which is being very supportive of bands, being very financially supportive of bands. So like it can be hard to chew off a band because there's going to be like a whole bunch of people that are also just dickheads that are like, no, I'll, I'll still spend money on that. And you're like, oh, sure. And then on the, you know, to, to fill you in on what's going on with our latest thing, whereas it takes somebody being a pedo to cancel in your, in the extreme metal world, in my world, architects, uh, guitarist, one of their guitarists, uh, liked a couple of transphobic tweets. Uh, I think he might've reposted one and then unreposted it, but he liked a couple of them and the outrage on that. Obviously trans transphobia doesn't belong in the metal community, but the outrage was like, cancel the whole band. Even after the band came out on stage in front of thousands of people and said, we support the trans, the trans community. We, you know, all of these things. Um, there's just this, still this, this outrage. So on one end of the spectrum, you have extreme metal, which probably could use a, a little bit more of that. And then on the other <laughs> end of the spectrum, you have, it's a little much guys like there's this chronically online group of people. So it it's yeah. very interesting to see the difference when it's at the end of the day, it's all metal, but there's the communal difference between the two styles uh, is, is such an interesting thing to, to, to visualize. Are there a lot of females in the extreme metal world? Let's let's okay. Let's be clear. There's not a lot of females in metal in general, <laughs> But relatively speaking, are there is there a lot of like a female listener base in extreme metal? I know there's a couple of female front women that are very good or other female members. But as far as the listening base, do you see that often or is it very male dominated still? Um, It's one of those interesting things where, I mean, there's 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 been a a large kind of push uh, of women just kind of like you know, forcing, uh, forcing, uh, room in for themselves, which is great. Um, in the past, yeah, in the past little while, it's really kind of like, you know, some chicks getting in there and some fucking with some elbows up to kind of be like, give me some fucking space. Um, so that's been really nice. And there has been, a uh, you're, you're noticing more bands too, where it's like, where it's not like, Hey, this is, you know, the, we have a, we have a lady, she does, clean female vocals and you're like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like yeah. you know what i mean they uh it's like no they say yeah they, we just have band members and, and and one of them's a lady and we don't we don't have in parentheses female beside her position in the band um uh but it's it's weird like it's a very like it, 
there's it's like almost like a band by band basis. Like you'll go to shows and there will be like no women at the show. And then you'll go to the shows, a show where it's like a similar vibed band. And like this is a band that somehow like managed to connect with a with a with a good portion of a female fan base, which is awesome. And it's like it's not like, oh, well, they've they've. It it's just like I don't know why it's this one and not this one, but I like this one, so that's sick. And I'm always happy to like I would, you know, I would love a 100 percent completely like someone from fucking every part of every part of spectrum in uh in 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 every fucking metal audience. So it's been really great. And yeah, it'll just be like weird bands where you're like, why are there so many women at? antichrist siege machine shows i don't know <laughs> but there are and that's sick <laughs> the the correlation i see in the core universe is the more catchy the songs are they don't have to be not heavy or anything they don't have to be poppy but the more catchy they are the more women like that and i don't know if you see that correlation I mean, there's especially in like Black and Death. It's not like yeah. it's like catchy isn't necessarily a song, a, a, a word that gets associated with a lot of stuff. And sure. yeah, it's just like it's I don't I don't know. Like like I said, Antichrist Siege Machine, Unza, the last show they did in Toronto, it was like a very split audience, and they're a war metal band, which is like some of the most extreme of the extreme metals. It's like the most extreme parts of death and black metal so it's like i don't know i don't know why i don't know what they did but it's connecting and it's resonating so cool sick love it so with uh banger tv and i don't know if these were your ideas and you can give me a little bit of background but obviously i got into banger tv from metal evolution documentary and all that stuff and found sam and you and subscribed and then uh, Shredders of Metal 1, Shredders of Metal 2, when Nick was on there, that was cool because I already knew him, and then you had the the drummer, the, I don't even remember what that was called, not Drummers of Metal, I don't know. It's just called of Shredders metal. of Metal 3, we're yeah, like, whatever. Hey, you know, <laughs> skins, it still works. <laughs> and then you had the, uh, the really awesome quiz show that was what was that last year it reminded me a lot of uh i don't know if you listen to liquid metal and sirius xm but it reminded me of into the trivia pit a little bit with jose mangan that's always a fun uh thing uh obviously i didn't know any of the questions being from my world but it was cool because i yeah. got to learn so it was, <laughs> yeah, it was yeah. that's why i listened that's why i watched um one what is the process of coming up with these ideas that are like these little one-offs of the channel's curriculum as a whole and then two do you have anything coming up next that you'd possibly like to hint at that's that's sort of creative in that way um yeah it, it's like uh it's kind of just like it, it it's a very nice it's a very nice place where it's not like you're like if you like think of an idea you pitch stuff you know what i mean like you just say like hey why don't we do this or why don't we try this or can we do this or hey i i I wrote this thing. Can we do it? And it's always been a it's always been a pretty um, uh, uh, kind of a supportive atmosphere for just hey, do you have an idea that's cool? Like if we can if we can figure out a way to execute it. Um, luckily in Canada, um, a lot of times they're like it'll kind of be at this partnership where in Canada there's like a fair amount of like arts grants. And so sometimes like there will be an art grant for like a specific type of thing. And then you go like, all right, this is what the art grant is for. Like, how do we like, how do we either like write something for this or how do we shoehorn one of our ideas into like right. technically qualifying for this little bit of funding? Because, you know, it's like, there's, there's not like, there's not, you know, a, a, a competition show where guitar players just like shred against each other there's not like right. a there's not a there's not a no one's clamoring to make that except for us so it it, it comes down a little bit to uh a, a little bit of creativity and a little bit of creative ingenuity kind of jamming things in where there will be just like you know it's like oh here's a grant where it's like it's like online interactivity 
It's like it's like That's media with basic, online right? interactivity, and then we go, okay, media with online interactivity. Oh, we can do a. You do a fucking quiz show. Oh, that shit. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's like you know. It's always like, how do we how do we make this without it being a total kind of like without it being like, well, what were you fucking trying to get a grant? Why the fuck did you make this? <laughs> right. And, exactly. uh, so so that's kind of always been the process. And then right now, I don't think there's anything really that's there's no new grants of like, kind of like <laughs> just uh, there's there's no there's no grant that's come up that we've gone like oh hey you know <laughs> that's hilarious that's cool though um i will leave with you with one question i'm very curious of because i've always wanted to ask this to you watching you but obviously i couldn't because i know and i'll i'll say it and you can correct me if i'm wrong but i know you're disdain for modern metal you're you're <laughs> you're not the biggest fan i know even when sometimes you're re reviewing an album and you're like yeah there's a couple of metalcore elements i really didn't like those but i liked everything else so like <laughs> i'm gonna challenge you right now and i want you to be as honest as possible give me one modern metal band and i'm not gonna say that you will like that you like but that you would tolerate more than the rest that you would say you know if it's you and bradley in the same room together and he just wants to punish the hell out of you with his music and he's like listen man just out of all my stuff what is one thing that i can put on that you'll you'll vibe with you're not gonna like you know your ears aren't gonna bleed or what have you so what what well, is I that mean, one I band? Say, i don't even we don't even have to qualify it that much i mean i okay. I I think I re I either reviewed or featured. I think I reviewed or maybe it was like a year. I don't know. Uh, Malevolence. I really um, Malevolence was a really cool band. Uh, uh, I I really dug that record. And that was, you know, I always say like there's ev like every single genre of music has something that I'll like. It's just uh, depending on the genre, there's like a a kind of probability equation that i can work out for like how much of it is gonna work but i i don't think i think i don't think there's like a genre of music that could put out like exclusively bad stuff because i'm at the end of the day i'm just someone that really loves music and i'm really open to and the the kind of thing the only thing that really like for me that that kind of interferes with with me having more bands in in kind of modern metal is that a i don't particularly like clean singing when paired with extreme vocals Fair. um uh, although you know there's some exceptions you know malevolence has some clean singing um and then there's also just i kind of like i got into metal through like the in high school, the main music I was listening to was like started with like pop punk, but then it like progressed to like more underground punk bands. And so I feel like the kind of like underground sound, not of like extreme metal or anything like just the underground sound of bands is something that I that kind of modern metal doesn't like. Like it's they don't they like they want things to sound really good. They want it to yeah. sound like the the fucking sound engineer who made this is like a genius and i'm like sometimes that's great but like most of what i want i'm like i want to i want like the production to sound bad in a good way yeah, messy yeah of, um, that's yeah. okay like that there's a there's a band right now called uh like i, I mentioned them earlier called psycho frame i would highly recommend you check them out because yeah. yeah psycho frame it's like psycho dash frame they're very old school deathcore, but with like a ton of death metal influences. In fact, the breakdowns are very limited. It's just blast beats, tremelos, uh, that really high pitched old school snare that you just don't hear anymore. That you used to hear on the corn albums back on the day, that sort of thing. Uh, so I would recommend that. But I, I want to really hone in on this malevolence. What, what about them or bands like them? What, what about that iteration of metalcore that? you like that you can't translate to other metalcore bands. I'm trying to see what the difference is. Yeah. I mean, it's hard to say it's, um, there's, I mean, I guess it feels a bit like they have, uh, you know, kind of what you're talking about where they're, they, they seem a band that, you know, pulled a little bit from say like sludge and, um, some other kind of like more on the, like 
on the uh, uh, outside of the core side of things. Mm -hmm. And it could also just be that, like, I like I said, I like I, I grew up listening to punk and hardcore. And again, there's like certain types of way you can mix kind of metal and hardcore. And it, you know, kind of ends up with like different parts of hardcore and different parts of metal, I guess, kind of getting in the mix. And I feel like malevolence just kind of picked kind of the right parts of of those kind of genres for me and it blended in a way that like yeah i will say my answer on the other end is dimu borgir or borger or however you want to say them i have been a fan of them forever they're not remotely modern metal but the the black metal it, it's it's kind of you say malevolence takes a lot of like some of the takes metalcore but adds some of that you know that punk that maybe some little extreme metal it's almost like dimu borgir for me takes black metal but adds some of that modern metal sort of well it's well polished a lot of their their production is really good and that's something yeah. that i have a hard time getting into with other black metal bands as it all just sounds like uh, as as a kid on the bus told me once when i was going to high school a bear in a washing machine <laughs> so yeah, it's, yeah. it's you know and, and dimu brings sort of that more refined you can hear all the words, you can hear all the grooves, you can hear everything has its place in it, especially with the symphonic element that like Death Call, Death Call Armageddon brought. Like you got that whole package that made it feel huge um, yeah. and, and not just, you know, one dimensional, it was just big. So that would be honestly my pick for extreme metal. I like Behemoth. I like Deicide. Um, that sort of group of black metal and death metal cannibal corpse but they it's so, it's so hard to really call them extreme metal anymore because they're starting to become a little bit more polished than they used to be yeah and yeah i mean no i mean they're they've been the they've been like the 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 highest grossing death metal band since you know since the 90s yeah and like bands like and gojira and you know that Gojira is kind of honestly would be my pick for a band that walks the line perfectly between both worlds. Yeah. Uh, maybe Lamb of God to a lesser extent, but Trivium, that sort of thing. Like those those bands are loved by both communities equally. So I yeah. think that's also really cool. Um, before I let you go, uh, do me a favor for our listeners and plug Banger TV, plug your Twitch, plug whatever you got going on. Yeah, so uh, if you uh, if you do want to hear some some uh, uh, a, a smattering of of different bands from the the metal world, um, every first Tuesday of the month, I find the five best underground metal albums coming out every single month. I try and do a little bit of black, a little bit of death, some just straight like heavy metal, um, and I make a show there, and we make a bunch of other shows on Banger TV, and then on my twitch especially every sunday hey if you unfortunately uh for i imagine a good portion of your listeners uh deathcore is not on metal archives <laughs> um no. and we will have different taste than you but every sunday i look up every metal album coming out one month in the future by opening up just every metal album on uh metal archives so it, we might make fun of the, what you what you end up enjoying from what we find, but you'd still be able to find it and you'd still get to listen to it. So, you know, it's a fun time. Usually there's usually every band we find, there's like one or two people in the chat that are like, hey, I actually like this. And I'm like, well, yeah, you're you're welcome to. <laughs> yeah. Hey, listen, and I will I will strongly suggest this for anybody listening that is really into modern metal and doesn't know a whole lot about extreme metal. It is. It's it's so interesting to me. It's really all genres of music, but just when you go back, when you when you start at the roots and you discover all of what made the music you like what it what it is today, it's really valuable to do that because you're gonna take inspiration, you're gonna know where it's coming from, you're going to value what you listen to a lot differently than you would just being pigeonholed into what's new and hip right now. And just like I said earlier in the podcast, there's a lot of extreme metal that is new and hip right now too so i think there's something to love for everybody but hey blaine thanks for coming on uh, it was a pleasure been a long time viewer first time caller today so uh <laughs> definitely uh, appreciate you coming on and i'm sure we'll be talking soon but uh yeah thanks so much thanks for having me man no problem and as always we're out